Once, New Zealand was a land untouched. Towering forests stretched from mountain to sea, dense with ancient trees and echoing with the calls of birds found nowhere else on earth. The land thrived in delicate balance, shaped by millions of years of isolation. Rivers ran clear, teeming with native fish and invertebrates that had never known pollution. Coastal wetlands pulsed with life, sheltering flocks of wading birds and providing nurseries for countless species. But this balance was lost. Deforestation, invasive species and human expansion reshaped the landscape. The wild was pushed back, fragmented into shrinking patches of land. Unique creatures, once abundant, now cling to survival in the remnants of their former range. Ancient forests that once blanketed entire valleys were stripped away, leaving scars across the land. And yet even in the face of this devastation, hope remains. A new effort is underway to restore what has been lost, to heal the damage and give nature a chance to reclaim its place. This is Southern Rewilding. In an ecosystem finely tuned by millions of years of evolution, a single outsider can change everything. Wilding pines introduced for timber and erosion control have spread across the South Island like an unchecked wildfire. They were planted with good intentions, but nature has its own rules, rules that do not always bend to human plans. These pines grow fast, far faster than the native forests they invade. They outcompete slow-growing beech and totara, spreading relentlessly across open landscapes. Where once stood rich, diverse ecosystems, now stands an artificial wilderness, a dense, uniform mass of needles and shadow. Biodiversity vanishes in their wake. Native plants struggle for space beneath their thick canopy. The forest floor, once teeming with fungi, insects and young seedlings, becomes barren, choked under a thick carpet of fallen needles. The land's ability to regenerate naturally is smothered, and as the years pass, the damage compounds. And when fire comes, the destruction is even worse. New Zealand's native forests evolved in a world without frequent wildfires. They regenerate slowly, designed to endure long, stable periods of growth. But wilding pines burn hotter and faster than the native bush, fueling infernos that scorch the land beyond recognition. Once the flames pass, what remains is little more than ash and erosion. Southern rewilding is taking the fight to these invaders. One by one, wilding pines are removed, making way for native species to reclaim their space. Each tree felled is a step toward balance. The land, if given the chance, begins to heal. The roots of native forests push through the soil once more. Birds return, bringing with them the seeds of recovery. Slowly, the wilderness finds its way back. New Zealand was once ruled by birds. With no native land mammals to threaten them, they filled every niche of the ecosystem. Some soared high above the forests, others foraged in the undergrowth, and many, safe in a world without predators, lost the need to fly at all. But with human arrival came a tide of destruction. The first waves of extinction began thousands of years ago, with the loss of the towering moa and the mighty Haast's eagle. Then came the rats, stowed away on ships, scouring the land for eggs and chicks. Stoats brought in to control an exploding rabbit population found easier prey, New Zealand's flightless birds. Possums, released for the fur trade, became insatiable raiders, stripping trees bare and plundering nests. Many species were wiped out before they had a chance to fight back. Others now teeter on the brink. The Kakariki Karaka, a striking green and orange parrot, is one of the rarest birds in the world. Once widespread, today fewer than 300 remain in the wild, confined to a handful of remote valleys. Their nests, hidden within tree cavities, offer little protection against predators that climb, slink and burrow their way in. Without intervention, this vibrant species will vanish forever. The mohua, once a common sight in South Island forests, has suffered a catastrophic decline. Logging destroyed its habitat, forcing flocks into smaller and smaller pockets of land. Stoats followed, hunting them relentlessly. Today they survive only in isolated strongholds, their future uncertain. And then there is the wyo, a duck unlike any other. Unlike most waterfowl, the wyo thrives in fast-flowing mountain rivers, navigating rapids with an agility few birds can match. But these same rivers, once a sanctuary, have become a battlefield. Stoats patrol the banks, waiting for a moment of carelessness. A single night can spell disaster for an entire brood. If the ducklings stray too far from their parents, they are lost. 
Southern rewilding is on the front lines of this battle. Their mission, to turn the tide, to undo the damage, and to give these birds a fighting chance. Across the South Island, traps are set in strategic locations, targeting the invaders that threaten native wildlife. With every predator removed, a nest is saved, a chick survives, a species takes one step further from extinction, and in areas where predators are eliminated entirely, the results are immediate. Birds return, populations recover. A forest that once stood silent begins to sing again. But trapping alone is not enough. In some areas, total exclusion is the only answer. Predator-free sanctuaries act as lifeboats, safe spaces where the rarest species can rebuild their numbers, away from the relentless pressure of predation. Within these sanctuaries, birds that have long teetered on the brink can finally thrive. Breeding programs boost their numbers, and once their populations are strong enough, they can be reintroduced into the wild. It is slow work, but it is the only way to ensure that these species do not become just memories. Yet saving individual species is only part of the story. A healthy ecosystem is more than just its birds. It is the rivers, the forests, the soil beneath our feet. The land itself must heal. Decades of deforestation have left scars across New Zealand, but nature is resilient. Given the chance, it will recover. Native forests, once stripped away, can grow again. Wetlands can be restored, breathing life back into the land. Rivers, cleared of sediment and pollution, can run pure once more. Rewilding is not just about looking to the past, it is about building a future. A future where nature is not merely protected, but given the space to thrive. The work is slow, the challenges are great, but every tree planted, every predator removed, every species protected is a step towards something greater, a future where the wild reclaims its place. Southern rewilding is not just restoring a landscape, it is restoring a future. If you enjoy learning about rewilding initiatives, please like and share with your friends. Let us know in the comments if there are any other rewilding projects you'd like to learn more about. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.